guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace and slash upgrade, if it's upgradable, um, the Pentium CPU in, uh, this, in one of these Dell's Inspiron 530 desktops, so, uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it and show you how to replace the CPU, one of these. I haven't done a CPU video on a desktop in a, in a long time. Okay. Not a long time, in a while. Last one I did was 2020? Yeah, I think 2020. But anyways, just get straight into it. <laughs> Start to unscrew these security screws on the side of the desktop. Can pull off the side with this grabber thingy and the first time I opened this up, it was really difficult to get off, and I ended up using a screwdriver to pry up on the handle area. You can actually see where I did that, and I did that because I thought Dell was hiding some PS2 ports behind it because I didn't want to use my USB keyboard upstairs. That's where I usually test my machines that I get from... Uh, the place, you know what I mean. But anyways, this is the inside of the Dell Inspiron Five Thirty. So can just put it onto its side, and this is where we're focusing CPU. Now there are four screws that you want to unscrew on the side. On the side, you're like, oh, I should remove the fan first. No, you can remove the entire cooler and uh, fan assembly together. And also, the fan connector is right there. You can see um, right there. That's for the fan. Let me just adjust this iPad. So, that's where you disconnect the fan. You can just pull up on the cable, and it just pops right out. And now you can start unscrewing the four screws. You can see when I'm unscrewing that. It's the four silver screws. I still need to do some work on this computer. Uh, I need to install a copy of Windows Vista with a product key. The last version I installed was a Anytime upgrade, which came with my mom's HP Pavilion PC that also came with Windows Vista. I did the CPU replacement video on that a long time ago, so. Okay, now I got one more screw. Can I unscrew it with this Phillips driver? No, I cannot. Good thing I have ex this extender, which might not, which doesn't work all the all the time, so that's why I don't like that. Oh, wait, it's gonna get stuck under the motherboard if I don't.
Okay, I got it. And Okay, I guess that's how I'm unscrewing it. I usually use these big long screwdrivers upstairs. And I bring this Phillips driver down because I thought I needed to pry that off. You know, the cover. So, yep, just pops right off. Uh, you might have to wiggle it a little bit before it comes off. I already took this off just to check how it's going to be removed so that I don't mess anything up during the video. It, that would have been bad. So, anyways, this is where the CPU is. So, if I can just move this aside that's our cpu and you see this hook thingy push that down and you pull it and it just pops right off and you can't remove the cpu now you have to lift up this door and then there's your cpu and you can see these peg things right here on the socket um, that, you, you have to remember that because you don't want to put your CPU in the, in the wrong way. That's the last thing you want to do. But this is the, uh, Pentium CPU. Um, yeah, Pentium inside. It's just called a Pentium. Uh, yeah. So, this is the CPU that you can probably upgrade to a Core 2 Duo. I think, because, yeah, I think, I have this old Pentium laptop that my dad used to use, um, from Dell, and the Pentium CPU, you know, just called a Pentium, and I could upgrade it to a Core 2 Duo, so I'm not sure if, uh, you could do that here, you probably can, so, yeah, can see these whole thingies, half circle, half holds. I don't know what they're called because I am very dumb. Yeah, but you want to remember those and when you're installing the CPU, you have to install it the way that those, these peg thingies are sticking out. So once you see your com uh, CPU correctly, you can close this door and you don't need to do anything else. Because this, when you close it, this thing moves and climbs it down. So once you close it, you're good. Now, you can uh, reinstall the cooler and fan. Some assembly. I was surprised to see that this computer still had a floppy drive on it. You can see the cable for it right here on the side of the screen. And I know this is not how you're supposed to tighten down a CPU. I know you're supposed to do it in some like star shape so that, you know, whatever. But I don't care. I am maybe a professional, but as long as it works, I am okay. If it doesn't work, then I will die. Just kidding. Okay. I like the color of this desktop. I like the white. Okay, it's in. So, what I what uh, to do next is to um, put the cover back on and well screw it in. I also need to put the antenna back on it that came with it. That's actually pretty good because then I can connect to the thing wirelessly and not have to download. Use my Lynx's Cisco wireless adapter that I have to use with 
quite a few of my desktops. Sometimes these panels are a little difficult to put on. Sometimes they poke out and you don't close them properly. Um, yeah, I think this is the way you're supposed to close it. So There we go. Now we can screw in these security screws, which I hate. They just poke out too much. Usually I don't use iFixit uh, screwdrivers or small screwdrivers on desktops just because they're too small and the screws are really big and sometimes you can't unscrew them with these small screwdrivers. But since I'm downstairs, why not just use it? You can see how beaten up mine has got. Th this thing, you see that turns when you screw something in? When I first got this, it was like smooth as butter. Now it's like all like weird and not smooth. But it's gotten beaten up, dropped on the floor and stuff. That mostly happened down here, I think. Because tile floor and everything. So last thing is to screw in the antenna. And there we go. So that's it for how to place the CPU in this Dell Inspiron 530 desktop. So yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, that's not a great way to end the video, but I don't know how, I don't know what I'm talking about. See, this happens to me sometimes. Sometimes I start talking and then I don't know what I'm talking about and I have to start over. Okay, but anyways, uh, I forgot what I needed to say. I hope you guys, oh yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. And check out my Twitter at uFelix5. I don't post on there very often. I haven't posted on it in like a few months. But anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoy enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.